Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now every day we're all using different kinds of storage, whether it's in our laptops and our desktops, whether it's in our smartphones, even things like digital cameras, uh, set-top boxes, almost everything that we use today in technology has some kind of storage in it. So everything from the humble hard drive to the tiny, tiny micro SD card, they're all different types of storage. Now the question is, what kind of speeds do these storage devices run at? Is there a difference between a hard drive and a micro SD card, or an SSD, or any other kind of storage medium? Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So there are two aspects to any kind of storage system. One is the interface, that's how the data goes from the memory of the computer across this interface to the actual storage medium. And then the second part is the actual storage medium itself. Now, different interfaces have different speeds. That means they can uh, transfer data across that interface at different uh, performance levels. And of course, the actual storage medium itself can read and write at uh, different performance levels. So what we're gonna look at today is the different speeds of the interfaces and then the different speeds of the storage devices and just see how wide of a range there is and all the different things we use, the differences between these different storage uh, mediums. Okay, let's get started. So what we have here is a graph of the different uh, interfaces that exist. Right down here on the left-hand side, we have USB 2 then SATA 1 and SATA 2, which is one of what you get for the internal drives for your PC, then USB 3, SATA 3, then MVME, and then also USB 3.1 and 3.2. Now, as you can see, there are two columns here. There is the theoretical, that's the kind of the uh, numbers that the, when you do the math, you can say this can send this many bits or this many bytes over in a second. And then there are some real world factors that need to be taken into account. For example, some data as it's transferred over an interface needs to be encoded in a certain way. So actually more bytes are sent than just the pure data. And therefore there is a kind of a real world speed that's different to a kind of a theoretical speed of the raw numbers that can go across. And as you can see, USB 2, and these all numbers are quoted in megabytes per second. And I do have a video about megabits and megabytes, which I really recommend you watch if you don't quite uh, understand the difference between them. But right down here at the bottom, you see USB 2.0 is really the real world maximum is 53 megabytes a second. And then if you go right way up to the other end, you can see the real world kind of speed of uh, NVMe over PCI Express version three with four lanes is 3,937.5 megabytes per second. And then you've got everything else here in between. So obviously the better the interface you've got, then obviously more data is gonna be able to flow over it. So that means just for starters, if you've got any kind of device that plugs into a USB 2.0 port on your PC or laptop, that is already gonna be limited in how fast it can read and write the data because of the limits of USB 2.0. And as you saw on that graph, you go up to let's say USB 3.1 or USB 3.2, then you can see a whole different range of performance levels that are just to do with the interface. Regardless of how fast or slow the storage medium is at the other end, this is how much data can go through the pipe to actually get to that memory card, to that hard drive, to whatever it is you're trying to write to. And actually this second graph here is just a look at the speeds I managed to achieve in my testing that uh, helped me make all this data. And you can see that for USB 2, for example, I actually got a maximum of 40 megabytes a second. For USB 3.0, I managed to get 394 megabytes a second. For SATA 3, I've managed to get 508 megabytes a second. And for PCI, uh, MVME over PCI 3, Express uh, with four lanes, I managed to get 2,608 megabytes a second. So again, you can see that the real world difference and the theoretical difference is actually quite different. Okay, so let's start with smartphones. So what we've got here is four smartphones, the Note 9, the OnePlus 6T, the S10 Plus, and the OnePlus 7 Pro. And there are four different numbers here, sequential write, sequential read, random write, and random read. 
Now, when any kind of computing device writes to storage medium, it can do it in, first of all, it's either reading or writing. So there are two different operations, writing the data so it's permanently stored there, and then reading it back. Those are obviously two different things, different directions. And then how that data is written, for example, if it's lots of little bits of chunks all over the place in different files, that's random read or random write. If it's a big chunk, so for example, you've recorded a movie on your camera and your camera is laying it down, writing it to the story, it's doing that sequentially, one frame after the other, and it's doing it as one big long file. And there are different uh, speeds associated with reading and writing, and then random reading and writing, and sequential reading and writing. So the first thing to notice is that the fastest thing always, and we'll see this across all of the devices, is the sequential read speed is always going to be the highest because basically you just say to the storage device, start at this point here and give me loads and loads of data until I tell you to stop giving me data. And that it just literally reads it straight off the medium and sends it over the interface. But sequential writing uh, is faster again than random write and random read. But again, writing is often slower on many of these mediums because uh, when you're trying to fiddle you know, with the magnetic bits, you're trying to fiddle with the flash storage, whatever you're doing, that device has to do that permanent recording and that takes longer. And as you can see here, the numbers for random write and random read are much, much smaller than the sequential ones. And the difference between the sequential and the random numbers actually makes a big difference to the overall performance. As we can see here, the highest device, the best device for rand, uh, for sequential read, sorry, is the OnePlus 7 Pro. But actually, if you look, for example, at its uh, random read and random write values, uh, the uh, Note 9 has much, much better random read, for example, than the OnePlus 7 Pro. So while it's strong in some areas, other devices might be stronger in other areas. And the overall combination of the read and write speed will affect the overall uh, performance, the overall experience you get from any one particular device. Now, another device that we use a lot, of course, is micro SD cards. And here I have a range of micro SD cards, different types, U1, class 10, uh, A2, and also an, an actual USB flash drive that you put straight into the USB port. And in each case, it's all running over um, USB 3. And we can see the fastest sequential read time, again, is on the USB uh, drive directly. However, you get good uh, USB read speeds from, for example, a class 10 and an A2 drive. However, what's interesting is when you look at like, for example, the A2, it's got a significantly better random write speed than the other uh, types of devices. And again, it's important to know what kind of application you're trying to use. For example, when you're just doing stuff on a video camera, then you want sequential write speed to be high. But the A2 class is actually designed for things that are with applications. That means there's random reading and random writing going on. So you can see here that the A2 class card has got much better random write speeds than the other classes, which are actually quite low because they're really designed for reading that data back sequentially or writing it sequentially. And the final set of devices I've tested here are the traditional kind of PC and laptop stuff. So we have an actual physical mechanical hard drive running over SATA 3. We have an SSD running over USB 3. We have an SSD running over SATA 3. And we have an M2 module running over PCI Express. And again, you can see the similar kind of pattern. The uh, uh, M2 module has got the highest sequential read. It's also got the highest uh, sequential write. But when you get down to the random read and random write, you can see that there's not that much of a big difference between, let's say, an SSD over SATA 3 and an M2 module. Again, because here we're not pushing the uh, limits of the interface, we're pushing the limits of the actual physical medium. And of course, the slowest uh, random read and random write times will find there on the old physical hard drive, because that's physically moving that head and physically waiting for the disk to spin round and then write the data in the right space. space. That's very different to flash memory that we see in these other devices. And here I've taken kind of the best from each uh, field. So there's a micro SD card with A2. There's a OnePlus 7 Pro for a smartphone. There's an SSD over SATA 3. And there's an M2 over PCI Express. And you can see the range here. So obviously, if you're using a micro SD card, that's a very, very different performance levels than what you're going to get out of even a smartphone or a SSD drive or an M2 module. And then again, you can see the difference between, let's say, an SSD over SATA 3 
and an M2 module if you're talking about your overall uh, experience with a desktop PC, with a laptop, then you get much greater sequential read and write numbers on the uh, M2 module. However, again, not a huge difference, a, a significant difference, not a huge difference between, let's say, the random uh, read and the random write, but if you then look at the random read and random write of the micro SD card or of the OnePlus 7, much, much faster on the SSD and the uh, M2 module. And so what I've done is I've looked at the combinations of sequential read versus random read. So if you've got an application, for example, that's loading off a storage medium, at some point there's going to be some sequential reading going on there. It's loading in graphics files, it's loading in maybe some database information. But there's also going to be some random reads where it's opening up smaller files, it's looking at specifically little bits of data, and they're all over the place. And so when you have the overall experience of using a storage medium, the combination of sequential read and random read is very important. So here I've got a graph showing you the difference between how long it takes to load 500 megabytes of data in a sequential fashion and how much long it takes if you're doing it in kind of 50-50, 50% sequential, 50% random, 90% 10 between sequential and random, and 98% 2% between sequential and random. So let's have a look at those numbers. So the first column, the orange column there, is how long it will take in seconds to read 500 megabytes from, let's say, a micro SD uh, card A2 uh, using sequential read. You can see there 5.3 seconds. But if it was 50% random read and 50% sequential read, you can see it goes from 5 seconds all the way up to 40 seconds. So an absolutely huge leap there. And if it's 90%, 10%, then it goes from 5 seconds up to 12 seconds and five seconds up to 6.8 seconds there for 98%, 2%. And I've repeated this experiment across the different devices. So again, you can see the difference between the uh, random read on a uh, OnePlus 7 Pro for just 500 megabytes, blazingly fast at 0.5 seconds. But actually, if you combine that with uh, random reads and sequential reads, you get much, much longer numbers from up from half a second to 22 seconds if you just do a 50-50 split. And again, the same numbers there across an SSD and an M2 module running over PCI Express. Now, if we actually express that in terms of difference, uh, percentage difference, we can see that a micro SD card is 120% slower when it reads 90% 10%, and that's what the number I've gone for, 90%, 10% is 127% slower. But on a OnePlus 7 Pro, that 90%, 10% is actually 800% slower. So you can see that actually switching from pure sequential reads to random reads and sequential reads has a big difference there. The SSD did absolutely amazing. It's the same as the micro SD card, just 124% slower, and a disappointing show there by the M2 module, 484% slower. Of course, you have to be careful with statistics because it really is depending on what you're looking at. So here's another set of numbers that shows you a different aspect of the same idea. So what I've got here is how long it takes to load uh, 500 megabytes uh, in 90%, 10% combination sequential read uh, and uh, random read compared to a traditional a USB 3 external hard drive. So you can, this is how much quicker it is. So you can see a micro SD is actually 52% faster than a uh, external physical hard drive running over USB 3. And that the OnePlus 7, even when you're doing that 90%, 10% combination, is actually 81% faster. An SSD is 91% faster. And an M2 module is 95% faster. So as often is the case in life, everything is relative. So we can think about the performance of, let's say, the OnePlus 7 Pro or of the SSD, but actually when you then compare that to something like a mechanical, physical, external hard drive running over USB 3, these speeds are significantly faster. So it all depends on what you're comparing with what and what your actual needs are. Okay, so there you have it. So as you can see, different types of things, all the way up from an M2 module, right down to a USB 2 flash drive, micro SD cards, external hard drives, internal hard drives, 
SSDs, they all have different types of performance characteristics and you need to choose if you have an option, for example, when you're doing a PC build or you have to choose when you're buying a piece of equipment to know what kind of storage it has, what interface it goes over and what kind of speed you can expect. Because ultimately the storage performance will alter the overall experience of using that device. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and um, well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.